Information implanted once upon a punched card. Punched card accounting is simply a matter of letting machines shuffle the papers. When machines do the adding and subtracting and multiplying and comparing and printing, business facts are handled with increased speed and improved accuracy. Before there were modern day computers, businesses and governments all over the world used punched card systems to track the flow of data. IBM was a pioneer in the original punch card computing system. In the 1930s and 1940s, one of IBM's main international subsidiaries was in Hitler's Germany. And IBM continued to do business in Germany during the lead up to World War II, despite growing international boycotts. In 1937, IBM's CEO, Thomas Watson, became the first American businessman to be awarded the Medal of the German Eagle by Adolf Hitler himself for bettering economic relations with the Third Reich. In his book, IBM and the Holocaust, historian Edwin Black argues that Nazi Germany relied on IBM's punch card technology to carry out their systematic genocide of Europe's Jewish population. He writes, card sorting operations were established in every major concentration camp. People were moved from place to place, systematically worked to death, and their remains cataloged with icy automation. IBM has acknowledged that the Nazis used equipment from IBM's German subsidiary during the war. They have said that the company finds the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime abhorrent and categorically condemns any action which aided their unspeakable acts. IBM has not confirmed allegations of deeper involvement in the Holocaust, saying that many of its records from that time were destroyed or lost during the war. But it is safe to say that IBM understands the potential danger of what happens when information technology is used for hateful and anti-Semitic purposes. Yesterday, IBM officially suspended all of its advertising on the platform X, formerly known as Twitter, after a report from Media Matters found that its advertisements had appeared next to tweets promoting Hitler and Nazism. An ex-executive ex responded by saying the company has done a sweep on the accounts that Media Matters found, and they will no longer be monetizable, and that the specific posts will be labeled sensitive media. To be clear here, they are not taking down the Hitler Nazi tweets. They are going to label them sensitive. That same day, ex-owner Elon Musk publicly agreed with an anti-Semitic tweet on the platform, one accusing Jews of pushing hatred against whites. Musk told the anti-Semitic user, you have said the actual truth. CNBC reports that that tweet prompted other companies to also pause their ads on the platform, companies including Apple and Disney and Comcast, this network's parent company. Despite the backlash, Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, and the owner of several of the world's most important technology companies, he is now openly agreeing with some of the most poisonous right-wing anti-Semitism that is out there. There is a dark history of what happens when American business leaders become complicit or active participants in this kind of anti-Semitism. The question now is, how do we as a society respond? <laughs>